Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. Good to be with you today. Anybody come out last week to the comedy show? Had a good time. Michelle did great. Uh, Tim Detellis did amazing as well, filling in and preaching his message to us. I thoroughly enjoyed being in his ministry. We are continuing in our series called A Journey Through Genesis. We started with Genesis 1-1. We've been studying it all out. It will conclude next week as I share the story of Joseph. Um, it's a really great story. You do not want to miss that one. Today we're going to look at a man named Jacob and as he wrestles with God. Now in the story it says that he wrestles with a man some other translations, he wrestled with an angel. But at the end of the story, it says that his name was changed to Israel because he wrestled with God. So because of that, we're going to say he wrestled with God today. Is that all right? Our key text for this series has, has been from a, a Hebrews 11.3. And it says this, by faith. By what? Faith. By faith. It takes faith to be a Christian. It takes faith to believe in the Bible. By faith. We understand, or by faith we believe, that the universe was created by the word of God. Now that's very important. If we look at John 1, John 1 says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. And there was not anything made that wasn't made by him. By him who? The word. And it goes on to say this, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we understand that God spoke it, but Christ did it. So here's the great thing about finding God. The Bible says that no man comes to the Father but by Jesus or by Christ. And here's the most amazing thing. Let's say someone is out on a hike, and they look at a beautiful waterfall, and they're like, there's no way that this happened by accident. There must be a God. Well, how did they find God? By nature. Who made nature? Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Through Christ. So someone found God through nature, which is Christ. He created it. So they found God through Christ, and that's the only way to God. It's a beautiful thing. We are going to study out this story of Jacob today. Maybe you can find yourself in this story. And the uh, Hebrews 11.3 ends with this. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. God didn't take a bunch of old parts of earth and remake it. They were invisible. They were by his words and by his creation. Before we start, let's pray. Father, we thank you as we get into your word today that the Holy Spirit would open the eyes of our understanding and lighten us to his truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I got a question for all the married men. How many married men do I have in the room today? All right, let's give them a round of applause. Men, have you ever tried to give your opinion on how to decorate the house? <laughs> it's about the same response I got first service. Uh, so maybe just me. Maybe I'm the only one who just like really went for it, tried to. So, I mean, I do have autonomy in two rooms of the house. I can decorate two rooms of the house any way I want, no questions asked. The first one is the garage. And the second one's the basement, right? Garage and basement, I can pretty much do whatever I want. But everything else, you know, you got this partner who has opinions, and then they kind of like trump your opinion. Yes, no? I know they're sitting right next to you. You're about to get an elbow. Not trying to put you in the doghouse. Just, just telling you my struggle, okay? So one time in my house, my house, we were redecorating the living room, and I was painting the house or the living room the color that my wife selected, the way that she wanted it selected. But when she was gone, I hung a bull skull with bull antlers in the middle of the living room over the couch. I'm a big hunter. I love animal heads. I love trophy heads. Uh, skulls and antlers and all. Anybody know? Okay, I'm very lonely right now. <laughs> so while she was gone, I put this bull skull 
right above the couch in the center of the living room. Wise move? I love it. I think it looks amazing. Every time I walk in, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> My wife, not so much. She was not well pleased in my well-doing. Anybody ever make a change in the house and the other person just not happy, didn't really appreciate it? So we didn't argue, we didn't fight, but we definitely wrestled with each other. This psychological battle of wills, like this isn't what I wanted, but this is what I wanted. Uh, anybody have those fights? How do you put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll? I like it over the top. No, I like it on the bottom, you know. How do you squeeze your toothpaste? All that, you know, those fights, those weird things. So let's just say, and I'm just going to be honest with you, the bull skull is still hanging in the living room. It's still there. But here's the real question. Did I win? No, I did not win. I got my way but I did not win. Come on, somebody. It's possible to get your way, but you did not feed into the relationship. You did not feed into an agreement of what our home is going to look like together. We wrestled, not in a physical sense, but in a psychological battle of wills between two people with different acceptable decor opinions. Yes? Sometimes, when we demand our own way, we're simply expressing our opinion. Something that we're saying to, to the other person, hey, I just want you to know I exist. I have a vision for what can happen. I like it this way or not this way. This is part of my life. So, all my other animal figures are in my basement, <laughs> since I get to decorate that however I want, right? Right? But trouble comes when we want our own way more than anything else. Trouble comes when we want our own way more than I want a healthy relationship. I want my own way more than I want to make you happy. Well, just tell that woman to submit. Yeah, um... My wife's Puerto Rican, <laughs> and um, she has a cuchillo, <laughs> a little, little pocket knife, and she's already warned me multiple times that she'll get me while I'm sleeping, <laughs> and I just have this vision, like I sleep with a CPAP, I got sleep apnea, and I just have this vision one night she's going to cut my air hose. <laughs> But demanding things to be done your way can sometimes reveal a deeper issue. Okay, so for me growing up, we were not allowed to decorate our own bedroom. I know some of you, your parents really didn't care. Like, that's their space. They could do whatever they want. And you had posters on the wall. And you put, like, those little uh, glow-in-the-dark stars all over your ceiling. You know, in my house, that just didn't happen. I was like, you're going to ruin the paint. You're going to ruin the wall. You know, no, you're not going to do that. So maybe it's some childhood wounding that I have, <laughs> right? Because I wasn't allowed to decorate my bedroom. I want my living room to look the way that I want it, you know, bare skin rug on the floor, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's unsettled for some reason, and I believe that maybe getting that bull, bull skull on the wall was going to fulfill some kind of deeper concern in my life, and really it didn't. It just kind of made more friction than elation. The story of Jacob in the Bible is a lot like that. He desperately wants his own way, and Jacob expends an incredible amount of energy to ensure that his story turns out the way that he wants it written. So before we get into the story, I want to tell you this, that God is good all the time. God is good. It, for God to do or be... Anything other than good denies his nature and his character. If God was ever not good in any realm, then he's not good. We have to know that. 
So everything that he has ever done and ever says must be good. And I know that we don't always understand it. But I want to start with this and tell you this, that God will give you what you ask for. God will give you what you ask for. But it might not always look the way you think. Let's go back and look at uh, some of our earlier studies. Lucifer ascends to God and he says, I want my throne above your throne. I can do your job. I have no need of you. Basically what he's saying. I don't need you to be God. I can be God. So God gave him exactly what he wanted. I know we think that God was angry and he was ticked off and he cast him down to the earth in a fury and he's so... No, he wasn't. He gave him exactly what he wanted. He said, all right, if that's what you want, then you can't do that here. You must leave. Come on. Adam and Eve, same thing. Eve was deceived. Adam decides to be with his wife and God says, okay, I see what your decisions. You did not do what I asked. You chose one another. You chose to listen to the serpent. So you cannot be here. Go do what you want to do there. Time and time again, God gives us. Listen, God will let you do things that are wrong. You know he does. He don't stop you from speeding. God's spirit doesn't come in and hit your brake pedal and put some kind of governor on your car. No. You choose that. He allows you to do that. And then all of a sudden, the blue and red lights are in your rear view mirror. It's, oh, God, save me. Come on. Today's story is found in Genesis 32, starting in verse 22, and it says this. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives and his two servant wives and his 11 sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side of the river, he sent over his possessions this left Jacob all alone in the camp. And many times in Scripture, when someone goes away to be alone, what are they doing? Praying. Praying. Jesus many times escaped and went away to pray. So it is my belief, and I'm only building it off of Scripture and the history of Scripture, I believe that he went away and took some time to pray. His brother Esau is coming into town. This is the first time that he is seeing his twin brother since he stole his birthright. If you'd know that story, Jacob and Esau were twins. Esau is coming out first. Jacob has a grab a hold of his heel trying to fight him to get that first place coming out sort of thing. Jacob creates this whole plan of deception to deceive their father Isaac to give him the birthright. And this is the first time they're going to meet up and uh, Jacob's kind of like, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. He's coming with his posse, with his boys, and he's concerned. And I think he's taking some time and he's praying. And he's saying, Lord, I need a blessing from you. I need help from you. I need protection from you. And the verse goes on to say this, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. I want to tell you this. When you pray, God shows up. When you pray, God shows up. When you pray, God shows up. But guess what? God doesn't always show up the way that you think he should or the way you think he should. Well, God, I just want you to give me a sign. Part the clouds and let me see my name in the sky. And then I'll know that it's you. God, if you want me to stay in this job, then when I get to work today, my boss better give me a raise. Yeah. Right? Like we put these demands on God. And we want God to reveal himself in very specific ways that we put him in a box of. Jacob prays, and God shows up in a way that he does not expect. Next verse. When the man saw that he would not win the match, the angel, God, he touched Jacob's hip 
and wrenched it out of its socket. He dislocated his joint. He dislocated his hip. Anybody ever dislocated something before? Yo, that junk hurts. I was a youth pastor, and I was playing at teen camp. We've been talking about teen camp. I was playing a bunch of teens, basketball at teen camp, and I've got this problem called I don't lose. It's a problem. Because as you get older, you're going to lose. And the young kids are a lot faster. They're a lot better at basketball. I mean, they're like, ah, they got all these moves. I ain't got none of that. I got like, oh, ah. That's all I got. That's the only move I got. I can't cross the ball. I can't do any of that. Anyway, I stayed back because I can't run like everybody else. They're running the court. I, I ain't running. I just give a little like this. Yeah, I'm the basketball court. So this kid gets his breakaway. He's coming at me. It's me and this 15-year-old kid. And I'm like, there ain't no way this kid's going to embarrass me in front of everybody and go to the hoop and score on me. Anybody else? Got pride issues? Yep. Thursday night, come see a CR. <laughs> so he's running as fast as he can. He got a breakaway, and he knows he's going to embarrass Pastor Mike in front of all the youth. So I gave him a WWF clothesline. <laughs> Bow! I did knock him down, but he put my whole joint right out. My, my whole shoulder just popped right out of the joint. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, there is no more basketball. There was no more, it hurt so bad. I'm screaming. I'm trying to run around my arms just like hanging out. <laughs> you, you ever hurt yourself and you just run in a circle you don't know what to do? That's what happened. And this nurse comes up and she's like, I'll take care of it. She puts a towel around my wrist. She puts her leg up in my armpit and she pulls it, joint back out. Put, oh my God. So I could understand. Mine was just a shoulder and this is this dude's whole hip. You know, now he got like scoliosis, and, like walking around, rips his joint out of the socket. And the man said, let me go for it. Dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let go of you unless you bless me. I will not let go of you unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked Jacob. And Jacob said, Jacob. And this dude says, your name will no longer be Jacob. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being in a street fight with somebody? Ba, 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 ba. He's like, you know, it's like a tie. You're all busted up. The guy's like, yo, what's your name? I'm like, Mike. He's like, no, nah, no more. Your name's Steve. <laughs> okay. Who gets it? Do you know how much work it is to change your name? You got to change your license, all your credit cards, right? The deed on your house. Like, this ain't just a, a little thing, like, to change your name. He says, no, your name ain't Jacob anymore. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Jacob says back, so please tell me your name. Why do you want to know my name? The man said, and he blessed Jacob there. This dude never says his name. He never gives his name back. That's so rude. <laughs> I told you my name, and you changed it, and you won't even tell me who you are. Right? Jacob named that place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Yeah, you're limping. And I could just imagine that he was like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, so he like took some branches and cut some crutches. And like, could you imagine his wife? Honey, I'm going to take some time to pray. And then all of a sudden he comes back on crutches, <laughs> limping. Like, what happened to you? Who's believing this story, right? Like, this is wild. But we need to understand a little bit more about Jacob. I told you previously, he was a twin. His older brother was Esau. And Jacob gets his name from the way that he was born. As Esau comes out, Jacob grabs a hold of his heel, and they come out together. And the name Jacob means heel grabber. Heel grabber. 
It also means, if you do a little bit of study, deceiver. Jacob means deceiver. A heel-grabbing deceiver. (laughs) And Jacob's kind of felt his whole life like he's been cheated out of something. Cheated out of something. You know, it's very easy to live our lives that way. Feeling like maybe we weren't raised the right way. Or our parents didn't give us the best opportunities. Or we were cheated out of a promotion at work. We were cheated out of our finances or whatever it might be. It's very easy to feel that way. And when you feel that way, when you feel cheated, when you feel like you're lacking something, you can many times make the wrong decisions to compensate for that over and over again. So why is it important? Why, why was it important whether Esau or Jacob was born first? Because in this time, the firstborn was the true heir. They've got the family blessing and they got all the possessions that were their father's. So there, it's very important to be the firstborn. And I mean, I don't know if you've got a younger brother or sister, but there's always that animosity between older brothers and sisters. You're not my mom. Stop telling me what to do, right? Feeling this way, Jacob created a plan to steal his brother's birthright. And we don't have time to read that today, but it is a really great story. And you can understand why he is where he is. So every time through Jacob's life that he had to say his name, he was confessing, I am a heel-grabbing deceiver. Every single time he said his name, hey, what's your name? I'm a heel-grabbing deceiver. Now, he didn't say it like that. He said, I'm Jacob, but he knew what it meant. He knew the depths of it. And in our own lives, many of us have given ourselves an identity that is untrue. Or it's an identity based on our worst day. Because of something we've done in our past, We carry this name around with us. And when people say our name or we have to say our name, the first thing that we think about is our worst day. First thing we think about is our mistakes, our failures. Have you ever gone to a meeting and you have to talk about your failed marriage and now you carry around this identity of divorce? Maybe you've found yourself addicted to something and now you carry on this identity of addict. Maybe you got fired from a job and you carry around the identity of a failure. Right? It's hard. And when you do that, when your eyes are on a past label, whether inflicted by somebody else or self-created, you don't live up to your potential. Jacob steals Esau's birthright. Jacob is wealthy. But what he doesn't know is that Esau is equally wealthy. And so in this fight, this wrestling match between Jacob and God, Jacob is forced to say what he thinks about himself. He's forced to disclose his deep, dark secret, and God says to him, who are you? I'm a heel-grabbing deceiver. Have you ever actually had that kind of conversation with God and just been brutally honest? God, I know you know all these things about me. You know my deepest, darkest feelings, but I'm laying this before you. Here's an identity that I used to carry. Here's what I deal with, Lord, and I give it to you. See, before he can get the blessing, he has to lay down the old identity. Before he can move into the new him and the new name, he has to lay down the old identity. And let me tell you this, God is not afraid for you to struggle with him. God is not afraid for us to struggle with, do I really believe in Christianity? God's not afraid of that. God's not afraid of your tough questions. God's not afraid of you wrestling with him to try to figure things out. Faith isn't about certainty. 
but moving forward in hope, joyful anticipation, and wrestling with mystery. Well, Pastor Mike, you just preach us and tell us what the Bible says. That's very hard because we can interpret the same scripture nine different ways. So you know what? That's the beauty of the Bible is that there's a little bit of mystery to it. So it's our daily bread. What is it speaking to me today? What is it speaking to me in my circumstance today? Now, there are some fundamental truths. There are some things that are not left up to interpretation. But there are other things that are just a mystery. And it wasn't until Jacob, the deceiver, the supplanter, the heel grabber, the con artist, admits what he was, this false self, that God blesses him. But guess what? Here's the thing. It doesn't look the way he thinks it was going to look. You know, like many of us, Lord, I'm just going to keep quoting a scripture, and you're just going to bless me. My man's walking with a limp. He didn't see that coming. He didn't see the pimp walk coming. In my opinion, I'm making this up, but I think he walked with a limp the rest of his life. I think that there was a story in that limp. Some of you walk with a limp. Some of us walk with the memories of our past. Some of us live with the wounds of bad decisions, the wounds of walking away from God, the wounds of doing things our own way, and we got a little bit of a limp. But you know that limp is turned into a testimony? That it's not a negative story of his history, but, it's, but that limp is the moment that he went from Jacob to Israel. And when we hear stories of the children of Israel, the millions of children of Israel, God's chosen people, these are Jacob's kids. The children of Jacob, the children of Israel, they're his kids. He's blessed beyond measure. His descendants is numbered like the stars begin in this moment. Maybe you've been looking to be blessed by God, that you need a breakthrough in your life. I'm saying maybe God is already at work in your life, but it doesn't look the way you want it to be. Maybe God wants to use the broken pieces of your past to build a more beautiful story for your future. And I know we want him just to walk in and wipe our slate clean and say, nope, it's all gone. Yeah. Your sin is gone. The guilt of it is gone in God's eyes. But we still come to our relationships and we come to our jobs and we come to, you know, people around us and we're kind of like, I got all these broken pieces. Maybe we could do something with it. Maybe we could build something beautiful with these broken pieces. And maybe you're dating today, you're in a, newly relationship and I just want to say like there's no such thing as finding the perfect person there's a type there's someone you're going to easily get along with but all of us bring something to the relationship from our upbringings the way that we were raised and the beautiful thing about a healthy relationship is that we come with these pieces and we say hey let me look at yours and look at these and man maybe we can build something with this we could build a life we could build some dreams. We could build a future. Maybe today you've been going through something in your life and you feel inadequate. You feel a little bit lesser than. Might I challenge you that maybe you need to grab a hold of God. Maybe you need to grab a hold of his leg. Grab a hold of his heel. Grab a hold of the one that can bless you. Grab a hold of the one that can heal you. Grab a hold of the one that can bring blessings and prosperity in your life. He isn't afraid of your tough questions. He isn't afraid of your history. Listen, God doesn't see our lives linear. God doesn't see our lives day to day. 
He's not forgiving you or accepting you day by day based upon how you act. When you came to God and said, Lord, I believe in this. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He looks down at you and, and counts for your whole life, beginning to end. And he factors in all your failures. He factors in your disobedience. He factors in the times that you're going to say no to him and you're going to mess up. And he says, yes, I accept you. With all the broken pieces, I still say yes. I still say yes to you. A thousand times I say yes to you. He said, but would you grab a hold of me? He makes this promise in John 15. He says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask anything and it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Grab a hold of God. He's not afraid of you grabbing a hold of him. He's not afraid of a wrestling match. Some of us have just been wrestling the wrong thing. Most of us, most of our problems is we're wrestling ourselves. We're wrestling what we know we should do and what we shouldn't do, and there's this fight daily. Start a new diet. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, I wore husky clothes. They don't even call them huskies anymore. They make it like pretty, like plus sizes. When I was a kid, I had husky clothes. And when I went clothes shopping, my mom would be like, no, you can't shop in this section. You need to go to the husky section. So I got kind of like body, you know, issues, body image issues. So like anytime I start putting on weight in my stomach, I'm like, I need to go on a new diet. So I'm trying intermittent fasting. That's from the devil. <laughs> I can only eat from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in that window, and then I can't eat from 4 p.m. all the way until 8 the next day. So it's like 10 o'clock at night, you're watching some Netflix, and it's like... I need some Doritos. <laughs> and in that moment, man, there's this battle that goes on, right? I know I shouldn't. I've committed this diet, but I want Doritos. Am I going to stick to this plan that I committed and gave my word to, or am I just going to go have a Dorito and start over tomorrow? Come on. But we do this with everything. We do this with buying things that we don't have the money for. Should I put it on credit card? Should I not? We're almost out of debt. Should I buy this? Right? Back and forth, this war. Like, we are our biggest problem. Not doing the things that we know we should be doing. And God's like, hey, I'm right here. I can help you out. I can give you the strength in your weakness. I can give you hope in a dark place. Time and time again, God is looking to bless you in the weak areas of your life. But you need to grab a hold of him. I'm telling you right now, you're not strong enough on your own. And I know you're strong. Some of you are like some studs in life, entrepreneurs, go-getters. You make things happen. And even on your best day, you're not good enough to do it without God's help. I'm telling you, your best day could be exponentially greater if you put the anointing on it, if you put God's anointing on it. Am I putting you down? Absolutely not. I'm just saying I've lived a while. I know what it's like to try to make things happen in my own strength. But when I let go of that and I grab a hold of God, he begins to work things in my life that I could have never done on my own. Esau comes walking into town and Jacob goes up to see him and it looks like there could be this great battle because Jacob's got his boys, he's got his army and Esau's coming with his boys and his family and his whole entourage and Jacob's got this whole speech planned. He's got it all worked out. He's got a gifts to give to his brother to kind of say sorry and Esau walks up and starts crying and embraces his brother. Jacob's like, I'm so sorry, I repent. He says, stop. It's good, bro. I have a great life. God has blessed me exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ever ask or think. 
Jacob lived in this whole, this whole life, he lived with this regret and this sorrow and this fear and this anxiety. And Esau wasn't even holding it against him. God blesses him. God restores this relationship, but it didn't look the way he thought it was going to look. I wonder if you let God outside of your imaginary box of how you think he should operate, how blessed your life could be. Maybe you're here today, you're watching online, and you've never grabbed a hold of God because you've never given your life to Christ. Maybe you've never said, Lord, I surrender to you. I give my life to you and let him begin to do a work on you. If you're watching online or you're in the room and today is a day to grab a hold of God and make him your Lord and Savior, I'd love to pray this prayer with you. Would you repeat after me? Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.